Welcome, welcome everyone to the fourth talk of this summer session. Exploring the way of practice realization. Exploring the way that's beyond dualistic understanding and at the same time right here. This very body, the whole body. On Monday, turning towards session, Johanna sent an email with the final roster of participants. And she signed off intentions for a powerful, compassionate session. Her intentions brought up the two wings of practice realization, wisdom and compassion, the power of empty, infinite freedom, and the compassion that activates or embodies that power. Like the two wings, I used this image before, the two wings of a great bird traveling long distances by stilling There's a word for that, stilling, not moving a feather, just carried along on the current of the wind. This session is framed as an exploration of practice realization, Dogen's name for Zazen. Day by day in these talks, we've been inquiring into what is practice realization? Why do it? And some of what the ancestors have to say and show about how to do it. It's day four in this session. So let's go on. Beginning with a passage from Kaz Tanahashi's introduction to Dogen's Shobogenzo, wonderful introduction, the translator, Kaz Tanahashi, where he strings together key phrases from Dogen. Here it is, part of it. Dropping away body and mind. Casting off limitations and hurling away enlightenment are some of the basic images of release from restricted self-experience. For Dogen, this means you set aside usual concerns, and are detached from both awakening and not awakening. While you give up holding back, you are not motionless. Rather, you break away and take the path of letting go. You leap out leap over and leap clear. You jump, fly beyond, and leap beyond ancient and present. Leap into now. Leap into... Strange. 
the leap is... <sighs> he goes on. When all preconceived notions <clears throat> of goals and objectives are lost, you float free and let myriad things advance themselves. That is the realm of the unconstructed, beyond knowing and beyond thinking. Here there is no effort and no creation. This place of no doing is not being lazy or idly thinking about freedom. It's an experience beyond obstruction that opens to thorough understanding, fully actualizing, realizing through the body and the embodiment of directly clarifying the source beyond words. It is not separate from each moment of sitting through and cutting through sitting. Almost every word in that is from Dogen, but it's just been put together. Sitting through and cutting through sitting. <coughs> Mu is the sharpest sword. Cutting through sitting. Jump, fly, leap, leap out, leap over, leap clear. Clear of any hindrance, clear of separation. So let's leap right into a koan that is all about leaping into the world of wisdom and compassion. This is case 46 of the Mumon Khan, or Gateless Gate. Uh, it also comes up in a different version in uh, the Shoyoroku, or Book of Equanimity, case 79. I went back and forth about which one for us, and the leap landed here. <laughs> Here's the case. Master Sekiso said, how will you step from the top of the 100-foot pole? Another eminent master of old said, even though one who is sitting on the top of a hundred foot pole has entered realization, it is not yet real. He must step forward from the top of the pole and manifest his whole body throughout the world in 10 directions. That's the case. So Sekiso, Sekiso Soan, or Shishuang, Chinese, uh, 10th to early 11th century, an eminent Rinzai master and a contemporary of Secho. Uh, Secho compiled the Hekigan Roku, or Blue Cliff Record, and composed a verse to go with each case. Sekiso was renowned for this question. How will you step forward from the top of a hundred foot pole? Oh, I suddenly pictured the kinhen in this zendo. The hundred-foot pole 
is likened to the flagpole in a monastery or a temple courtyard. A flag would be, you know, raised. This is tradition. Every time there's a Dharma talk, a Taisho, or Doksan, these private interviews, any kind of teaching going on, raise the flag. But Sekiso's question points to a, a state of being or an experience where the flag is gone. Everything is gone. Concepts, judgments, thoughts ceased, wiped away. It's an image of not one thing. As Bodhidharma put it, fast and void, total emptiness. This dropping off, dropping away can be like sitting on top of a pole. You never know when it can just come up even a a sense of this. You know, the whole empty infinite universe spreading out in ten directions. Everything fallen away. No subject or object. No opposition. No one there. Beyond the field of the unconditioned. Or as that saying goes, I grew up hearing this saying, not a speck of cloud in this spacious sky. Or another version, not a speck to mar the gazing eye. This, the tradition says, is bliss. It can seem not even bliss. House fallen, person forgotten, one empty infinite vista. Mumon describes this state in his commentary on Mu. We talked about Mu, we didn't go very much into this commentary. Mumon writes, you know, here, springing from his experience again, this is This is how it happened for him. He says, you must extinguish all delusive thoughts and beliefs which you have cherished up to the present. We do. (laughs) Bittersweet. After a certain period of such efforts, Mu will come to fruition. Again, you you don't go get it. It just comes comes to fruition. Mumon says, and inside and out will become one naturally. Or I, I like David Hinton's translation of this passage. He writes, let all the delusions of a lifetime go. All the understanding and insight. And slowly, little by little, nurture the simplicity of occurrence appearing of itself. Soon inner and outer are a single tissue. A 
single tissue. A single tissue. Person forgotten. Mumon goes on. You will then be like a dumb person who has had a dream. You will know yourself and for yourself only. Top of the pole. One nothing at allness. (laughs) Oh, these words. Even the Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, whose realization was absolutely thorough, complete, sat on his place in Zazen for a week. Some traditions say three or four weeks. Unmoving. Nothing to do. No one to do anything. And no one there to help, to free, to save. But that's not the end of it. How could it be? Tradition says that for Shakyamuni Buddha, the gods finally had to come down and convince him to get up and teach. You know, I mean, he's, he's like, not only just in this not even bliss, but when they said, you have to teach, he's like, nobody will ever believe this. <laughs> How could this world, this empty, infinite, one world ever be conveyed. But he did get up. That's why we're here. He got up. Mumong continues, sort of describing for us this next step. Step. Then all of a sudden, Mu will break open. It will astonish the heavens and shake the earth. It will be just as though you snatched the great sword of General Khan, this great general, this fighting general. You snatched the sword. Not quite precise, I could hear. Rion saying he likes to, (sighs) you don't just snatch the sword, you are the sword. And it's in your hands, it's your practice. Though you may stand on the brink of life and death, you will enjoy the great freedom. Lamont says. Life and death. The great freedom. Really see this life whole, death whole. Ah, oh. Beautifully functioning. Each thing so complete, total freedom. Mamon goes on throughout all time and space, all modes of being, you will enjoy the samadhi of innocent play. That's what this is. 
I like samadhi as things just as they are. Samadhi of the tree outside. The sky today quite blue. The breeze in the zendo. The hum of the electric system. Samadhi. And everything at play. Stepping forward, falling into the world of the 10,000 myriad things. I suddenly recall years ago uh, being in session with Kubota Roshi. He passed away about six months ago, I think, this year. well into his 90s. And uh, he used to teach fairly regularly at this uh, place in Germany. And one time there in session, and he was giving Teisho on this koan. And uh, his English was a challenge and so he, he held up his stick, you know, we, we come up, this, you know, and then you, you have to, you know, take that step. And he said, try it. Just about everybody who does it dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's right here. Seki so asks, how will you step forward from the top of the pole? And in case his question leaves any doubt about that step, that one gesture about that movement breaking forth, Mumon pairs it with Chosa's teaching. So Chosa, Changsha a much earlier master, a Dharma successor of Nansen, a Dharma brother of Joshu, this Chosa. Chosa, even the one who is sitting on the top of a hundred foot pole has entered realization. It's not yet real. That one in this wisdom Shunyata, nothing at all. It's not yet real. She must step forward from the top of the pole and manifest her whole body throughout the world in 10 directions. In that Shoyoroku case where this shows up, Chosa says this even a bit more directly. Yes, take the single step, the absolute command, as Mumon puts it for Joshu's dog. But the fact is, and this is how Chosa puts it, the world in 10 directions is your whole body. The 10 directions, you know, are these eight directions on a compass plus up and down. Every direction, all encompassing. Beyond anything, we know about the outer reaches of space and time as though we would know this one whole entirety, what the world is, this world what you are. And then in the teaching of Chosa in this record, it all gets elaborated. There's a scene, the monks gather, they're waiting for a word, and Chosa, Changsha, goes on a rant. 
if I give you some Dharma teaching, then there will be grass growing in the hall 10 feet deep. <laughs> Concepts galore. Chosa says, but this is something that can't be stopped. So I say to you that all worlds pervading the ten directions are the true person's complete body. Pervading all worlds in the ten directions is your own brilliant light, that radiance. All worlds in the ten directions are within your own light. You can really have a glimpse of that, a sense of that. Everything's going on in my body. There's just no outside and there's no inside. He goes on, and throughout all worlds in the ten directions, there is not a being that is not you. Talk about compassion. Chosa is expressing, manifesting, maintaining the fact. Every direction. Everywhere. This real you. That he's giving a sense with this light, this radiance, that it's nothing but that. Energy, freedom, dynamism, illumining everything, illumined by everything. Those flowers illumining us. And nothing to obscure. This radiance, this total equality, things exactly as they are. That samadhi of innocent play. So Dogen takes up and elaborates on Chosa's teaching. There's a chapter in the Shobo Ginzo called Ten Directions. And it starts with this very short paragraph. Dogen writes a single fist, just this, is the Ten Directions. A sincere heart, just one, is simply the Ten Directions crystal clear. The Ten Directions Dogen, squeeze out the marrow from the bone. A single fist, a stick, a sound, the ten directions. You know, crystal clarity, so clear. Your own heart your own sincere heart, utterly complete, and there's no other. It goes to the quick, to the marrow. You don't have to squeeze it out. The directions, the 10 directions, the 10,000 myriad things does that. Already gone. <coughs> Dogen goes on, he's about Chosa. Chosa said to the assembly, the entire world of the Ten Directions is a single eye of a monk. The entire world of the Ten Directions is the everyday words of a person. Sound. And Dogen then comments, the words and speech are straightforward as everyday words are the entire world of the Ten Directions. He 
You know, this might sound redundant to us, but it's clearly not to Dogen. You, you can't say it twice. And there's this effusion coming up. The ten directions itself is just, just the sound, the straightforward bare heart. And Dogen goes on with Chosa's teaching. The entire world of the ten directions is the whole body of the monk, the radiant light of the self within the radiant light of the self. In the entire world of the ten directions, there's no single person that is not the self. He's not talking about that little I, me, mine. That is long gone. Oh, I suddenly recall Rion. He was actually talking about life and death. And he once said, 10,000 year old obsolete language. Or maybe it was 5,000. Life and death, obsolete language. I be mine, <laughs> obsolete language. So Dogen comments, thus each practitioner, each fist in the ten directions cannot help but be the self. There are no ten directions that are not the self. Each and every self is the ten directions. The ten directions of each and every self are intimately immersed in the ten directions. It's like his line, the sky, sky's the sky. Your whole body intimately immersed, and you can't fall out of it. Let body, mind fall, self, another fall, any last sliver of separation fall. But the fact is already so. Let go. Of what? And fall into this, into who you are, right where you are. There is no other. Again, Shakyamuni Buddha, top of heaven to the bottom of the earth. One existence. In the Q&A yesterday, I mentioned letting go of perfectionism, or doubt, or lack, or not yet, not for me. That grip that fist is just a contraction, a story rehearsed enough times to get kind of crusty, to give the illusion that there's something fixed and fast in how we define ourselves separate and incrementally safe. Safe from what? What if even that fist, that grip, that contraction, is just another expression of the single fist. <laughs> just this, Dogen says. 
whatever it is, just this. The 10 directions freely manifesting in the sincere heart that brings us to this practice. A sincere heart, just what, is simply the 10 directions, crystal clear. There's a sweet story from the record. Chosa and Kyozan, very close Dharma siblings, both became great masters. They're out enjoying the moon. Kyozan says, everyone is completely endowed with this, but they're unable to make use of it. Chosa says, I invite you to use it now. Kyozan asks, well, how would you use it? Chosa knocks Kyozan down with a shove to the chest and steps on it. Kyozan responds, whoa, just like a tiger. And the name sticks. That's what Chosa means. Everyone is completely endowed with this wind, that sound, this computer, trees, mountains, summer day. Clay walls in the zindo, candle. Also, the suffering, the longing, the heart's breaking, sometimes breaking wide open. Such capacity. How will you use it? So I just stop. Not really to answer that question, but because there's this typical and wonderful Dharma Hall discourse of Dogen. I'm going to close with it. He so appreciates this world, this pull, this stepping forward, wisdom, compassion, this capacity, all of the, the masters, you know, he, he writes and writes and writes about the tradition. But every time then in the end, it's like lifting this up and just topsy-turvy world. You know, no boundaries, no limits, this dynamism, this play. So here's this little discourse, little in terms of short. Dogen writes, an ancient person said, take one step forward from a hundred foot pole. It has also been said, take one step backward from a hundred foot pole. It's like do si do. From ancient times, it has never before been said to remain with each step on the top of a hundred foot pole. When practicing, move forward one step, move backward one step, abide with each step. This top of the pole 
Duggan writes, is exactly where all people settled the body and established their life. This life. And exactly the seat of realization where all Buddhas attain unsurpassed, complete awakening. right here. This top of the pole, also bottom of the deepest sea. So all Buddhas, all Buddhas attain unsurpassed complete awakening. All Buddhas is you. And the support of all Buddhas. All the awake ones is infinite. Inexhaustible. Immediate. You can't take a single step without it. So let us continue our practice. Thank you so much.